Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to continue on the series where I'm building Spotify using Ruby on Rails. And in this video, I want to try to build the audio player for the bottom of the page. So when you click on a song, it'll pop up an audio player down at the bottom. And we can use that to choose where we are in the song. Like, choose the time. And then also you can, like, pause, play, and maybe skip like do a, we can add a next button and a previous button so that would be pretty fun let's get right into it so what do we need to do to add that bottom player when you click on the play button well we're going to need to trigger some code which will add that display based on whatever song we're playing so where i would do that is probably right inside the javascript so if you remember in the last video we added a stimulus controller Called the music controller where inside of here we are actually have like all this logic to choose if like what song is playing and then it'll also cancel the old song if like the previous one was playing it would pause it and it would also you know turn off that button it would toggle that button just in case it was still showing the play button so i think what we do is we do this somewhere in here so like right here, if the audio, in this condition right here, this is when we're switching the song. So we can even put a comment like, switching song, initializing new song. So whenever this happens, I think we would want to do the thing where we open up the bottom player and we switch it. So what I've done for this previously is, I'll just make a request to the server and I'll have some like route some endpoint on the server where we just handle putting the new audio player and we'll just render an audio player at the bottom but let's go ahead and do that real quick we can just get the most simplest feature and then like build it out so first of all i'm going to go to the views layouts application and i'm going to need somewhere that we can put that audio player so i think i'll have like a div at the bottom of the body and I could just call it like audio dash player. Let's close this off. This is also gonna have a class absolute bottom zero. So we set that one div at the very bottom of the page, which is gonna have absolute. And right now there's nothing in it, so you don't even have to worry about it. But this is where we're gonna target with the audio player. So next we're gonna need a route. So if we go to the config folder, the routes.rb, we can create a route or the audio player. So I might put on the music controller since there's nothing in the music controller right now. We have this resource for this controller. If I add a block on this by doing by adding a do, inside of it, I can set a new action. So I can have like a post, we could go to audio underscore player. And this will go to music audio player. So we're going to go to this URL, which will in turn hit this path or this action in the controller. Now, I think also I want to say on collection, just to make sure that we don't need to pass in any sort of ID to this route. Now I want to see how this looks. We can test out our routes by doing Rails routes in the terminal. So just type in Rails routes and it'll print out all the routes in your app. And we can look through here. I just want to see the audio player route. So it looks like we have this new URL helper called audio player underscore music. And that would be like a path. So what I need to do is I need to pass that into our stimulus controller. So let's go back to the views, let's go over to the songs show page. So inside of here, actually not the song show page, it was the music folder in the show page. So inside of this music folder, we are rendering the play button for each song. So inside this play button, this is what it's looking like. It already has a music URL, which is like the URL for the song. But we're also going to need the audio player URL. Like where we're gonna go and post to that to the server to render the audio player. 
So I'm going to pass that in through an attribute as well. So I'll just do a data dash music dash audio player URL value. And then I'll just pass in audio player underscore music path. So this is going to be the URL that we're going to target. And actually, we might as well pass in like the song ID, which can just be song the ID. All right, that actually looks good to me. Now inside of the stimulus controller, if we come back in here, we're gonna add that new parameter to the value. So we have audio player URL, which is a type string. Now we have this, which means right inside of here, we're going to like make a post request to the audio player URL. That's what we're gonna do right here. Now we need a library for making post requests and you can use like the fetch library, which is built in to the HTML. So you can use that anywhere, but it's kind of complicated with rails because you need to set a CSRF token. But instead of that, you can use a library called request.js. The request.js is built by rails. So you kind of have to look up like rails slash request.js and then you find this GitHub page. So this is what we're going to do. So to add request.js, I actually usually just use import maps. Although I guess they say that they want you to like do this install and do a bundle. I don't really think that that's necessary though. Because I usually just do a bin slash import map pin and then I pass in rails request.js. This usually works for me. As you can see, it's pinning request.js to vendor. And I guess it did it via download. So it like downloaded a version of request.js, shoved it into my vendor folder. So I don't know, maybe that's a bad way to do it. Anyways, I think we have request.js now, which means we can restart the server. And inside of our stimulus controller at the very top, I'm gonna import the post method from rails slash request.js. There's a few different methods, like all the different HTTP methods you can import from this library and use, but for us, we only need the post. And to do a post, you have to actually await for the function, which means you have to add async, the async keyword to the method that you're inside of. So for us, it's the toggle. Like this is the method that we're inside of, so we need to add async to the toggle method. Either that or just create a separate method for updating the nav player, which might be a better idea. So we can remove async from toggle and we can just have another method like update audio player. Let's just call that a method, which we're gonna have to define. Okay, so we can just do it underneath the toggle method. So I have update audio player, which will be an async method. Just like that, so it's async. And then inside of here, we're gonna await posting to the audio player URL value. So yeah, basically just like this, that's all we need in our code. This is gonna make a post request. We don't even care about the response, so we can just leave it just a simple function like this. So now on the controller side, inside the music controller, it's gonna expect us to have an audio player function just like this. And inside of here, we get like the song. We could find it by the song ID that we're passing in through the URL. And then really we could just render something from this controller. So that's what we wanna do. I Actually, we do want another option. We wanna expect a turbo stream response. So to do that, we have to just add parameters in here and then we can set response kind to turbo dash stream just like this. So now it's gonna expect a turbo stream from our Rails backend. So what we can do is we can actually make a template inside the music folder. We can create a matching turbo stream template. So audio player dot turbo stream dot ERB, just like this. This is gonna be the matching template which it'll render since it's expecting a turbo stream response. So inside of here we can do turbo stream.update and we'll target that 
nav player div that we added inside the layouts. So if you remember, we added this audio player div. So it's an ID of audio player. So inside of our template, we can update audio player. And yeah, anything that you put in here now is gonna show up for that audio player. So usually I would create a whole like partial and everything. But if we wanted to, we could just style it right here on the page, like right here inside the turbo stream. So we can just make a simple div, give it a height with full, and do like a dark background. And then we can just start rendering stuff about the song. So we have that song variable. We could do an image tag for the song image. We can do like width 20, height full, object cover. So it should just be a square image. Then we could print out the song.title. Probably inside of like a little tag. Just like that. If we reload, I just want to see if this is working. So let's click play. And we actually do see something down there. Although it looks like the absolute position is not really working. You'll see every time we click, we see it, it does change. It switches out. But I'm not sure what's up with the styling. So we have this div. Let's try to change from BG Gray 900 to like a lighter color just so we can see it. Like a difference from... Okay, so this is what's happening. You'll see that our image is showing up, but the text just totally gets moved on to the next line outside of the background, which is interesting. I want to see, maybe I have to fix some stuff about this. Like let's add flex onto this div. And also in the layouts, let's add a width full class on our audio player div. Reload. All right, now at least we have the image and the text in the same element, it looks like. But I'm gonna need to style this just so that our player is stretched like the full length of the page. So I have to see what's stopping that from working. So it looks like we have this div audio player. Oh, it looks like I'm, I added a typo on the width full. Three L's instead of two. <laughs> All right, now when I, re when I reload, it actually is working. So we have the image right here and then the name of the song. So from here, we already have like a bottom little div. Now we're just going to be styling it and adding in a few more controls. All right, guys, I was thinking it would be cool to have some more music to work with in the app. So I'm just going to go and post some new songs. All right, I think that's good. I posted some more songs. I'm just going to go and sign out and go back over to the music section of the app. All right, so we have a little bit more. And fill up the UI a little bit. But one thing I just noticed is the app's not responsive right now. So I'm going to try to fix that by adding a breakpoint on the show page. So on our grid styling up here, if I add a medium breakpoint on the grid calls for, that should mean on smaller screens, yeah, we'll just stack them right on top of each other. That's fine. Although the picture now is like more smaller. I guess that's okay. Or we could make them larger on mobile. So to do that, we'd add another breakpoint on this height 40. And we could say on smaller screens, it could be a larger height if we wanted that. The only thing now is it takes up more space. So you'd have to actually scroll through each song, which might take a while. But I think this is okay for mobile. Although we can look at refactoring this later. Like now I just want to go back to the dashboard, sign out, go back to the listening side, see how it's looking. We have a few more things here. All right, guys, now I just want to style this bottom player. I can finally focus on this. So to do that, we have it nicely inside of this turbo stream template. Now, eventually we might want to put this into its own partial just so it's easier to remember where it is for one and also just to reuse it in other places if we ever need to. Because we might not only want to do it from this one turbo stream. So we can just do that right away by copying all that code, 
and then let's just do a render for audio underscore player. I'm going to pass in the song as a variable or as a local. And then on this music folder, I'm going to right click, do a new file, which is going to be a partial. So it's going to be underscore audio underscore player .html .erb. And I can just bring the code back and drop it inside this partial. Now, the one thing we're going to have to change is the at sign on this song variable. Because we're passing it in as a local now, we don't need the at sign. We actually just need to change that so that it's without the at sign. And now everything should still work exactly the same if we were to play some more songs. And one cool thing about this is we don't need to reload since that partial is being server rendered. We can make our additions and then we can just click on another song and it'll automatically use the new code. That's one thing to note. So if I want to make this title lighter, I can just add like a text white on it. And then I don't even need to reload. I can just click another one. Automatically you'll see the new code. That's cool. Now I also want to center the text. So I'm going to add an item center on this div. Now when we click play, oh, I accidentally reloaded too, just as a habit. But now we see that it's right there. Maybe I want to add some gap around each element. So I'm going to do a gap four. All right, this is what it's looking like. Oh, and one thing I just noticed, now that we can scroll, the audio player is not sticking to the bottom, which is what I kind of expected it to do. So to fix that, we're actually going to go into the layouts application file. And on this audio player, where I was using absolute, I actually wanted to do fixed because fixed means it'll move with the scrolling of the page. Now we can just go back and we actually should reload for that to take effect since it was from the application. Now this is cool because I can scroll and I still have the player at the bottom. But one thing to notice is these bottom cards are getting cut so I can't even see them. Like they're getting covered. I can't see the text or the play button. So we're actually going to need to accommodate for that by adding some padding to the bottom of the app. So to do that, you can probably just do like a padding bottom eight on this layout. I think that wouldn't be a problem. Although it kind of is because on this page we have a custom color. So it is having like a little bit of a weird style at the bottom. But it does kind of work for pushing that uh, the audio player. It gives it a little bit of space. So why don't we go to the music show page and we can add like padding bottom 36, something crazy. Which means there's always going to be a huge amount of padding. So there's enough room that you can still scroll down to view all of the cards. And you might just want to think about that. Wherever you're rendering this bottom player, it has the possibility to go over the elements. So you want to include enough space. But that's not really a problem. All right, cool. So now we have the title and we have the image. So now I want to add like the audio slider and also like the time. So it tells you what time you are at, like what, where you're at in the song and you can scroll to different positions. So to do that, we can go into our audio player partial and inside of here, we're going to use an input with a type of range. So this is going to already have like a slider kind of look to it. If you reload, yep, this is what we're going to get. So we get this little slider and now we just have to style it to show up correctly. So why don't we give it some sort of width like we could even do like width full although i think it's gonna be way too long oh yeah it looks so it's huge it takes up the whole width so let's do a max width on here back to the 2xl and then a width full one see what that looks like all right i mean i think that's good and we are going to need some sort of javascript to be doing these updates on the input to like change the position. Also, when you click, it should update the position that we're in, uh, in the song. 
Actually, I forgot that the music was playing because I didn't have my headphones on. So hopefully you guys could hear what I was saying. But what I was saying is we need some JavaScript to connect to the slider so that it can change based on where we are at in the song. And also when you click on it, it should update like the position of the song as well. So we can work on adding a stimulus controller for that. I think I'm just going to wrap it in a div. That's where I'll start. Hopefully our max width will still apply if I wrap it in a div. Oh, it looks like it doesn't. Hmm. Okay, we can leave this like this. Maybe I'll just add the stimulus controller onto the top level div. And I can just call it like audio player. And then on the input, you can add it as a target, the data audio player target. And I'll set this to the range, I guess is what we'll call it. And then I also want to have something that displays like the current time in the song. So we do something like this. And let's also add that as a target. So do data audio player target equals current time. And we can have also like a slash. I guess we want to put that in something. But we can do a div around these, around the controls. And I'll do class flex, put it slash, and then I'll do another span. I'll just copy this one. And it'll be the duration. So that's like the full length of the song. And we'll want to make sure that we update these and also the range. And then we should be good for now. So let's create the stimulus controller real quick. And to do that, I'm going to quickly go into the console and run a Rails G stimulus audio underscore player. This will create the stimulus controller. Now I'll restart the server and go over to that audio player controller. Oh, inside of the JavaScript controller is the audio player controller. All right, inside of here, the first thing I'm gonna do is define those targets. I'm gonna set static targets equal to current time, duration, and also the range. So now I just wanna see if we can find that audio because in our music controller, we're setting the audio on the window and I don't know how like sustainable how working this is going to work once we start wanting to like persist the audio player across multiple pages i don't know if storing it on the window is still going to work the same way but we can figure it out once we get to that point but for now inside this other stimulus controller i want to see if we can access that audio so i'm just going to console log or i guess it's lowercase window.audio And let's put this all together now. And I'm going to open up the browser console by inspecting element. And right away, look at that, we get the audio. So I guess I didn't have anything to worry about. Oh, it looks like I need to change the color on the on the, the, the time controls. So I'm just going to add an overall text white class. There we go. But it looks like that won't be a problem getting the audio. So we can basically just do a check here. If window audio, how about if not window audio, we return. And then underneath, if we do have it, then we can just do the code that we need to. So I wanna add an event listener on the audio. So I haven't done this in a minute, so I'm just gonna look it up. JavaScript audio events. We have all the events right here. There's actually a lot of them. We could probably hook into the duration change. Actually, right off the bat, let's set the different things that we need to. So first of all, the range target value should be zero. And so the max, I think we can set the max here. 
and set it to window.audio.duration. Let's also get the duration target and set the inner HTML to window.audio.duration. I think that's what it is. We should probably have to log that as well. Let's go back here. Let's play an audio. All right, so that basically is right. And if I look at the range, we have the max is 130. That? I think that's good. Okay. So actually, I want to convert this, these seconds, like 134. I want to convert that into this sort of styling, like the hour colon minutes. So I'm actually going to ask ChatGPT about this. How do I convert seconds into format? And I'm going to say that I need this in JavaScript. So we can have this function format time. I'll probably just take that code and oh, I guess I will want to put it in a function now that I think about it. It'll just make it easier to work with format time that we can pass that in before we put it in the inner HTML. It's just like this format the time and that should be fine. Now for the current time, we need to actually add an event listener. The window.audio. Basically, I wonder if there's an event. Is there an event to get the current time? From the audio and update element. There's a time update event. It's giving me like the whole code example. So add event listener time update. Okay. Try that out. Add an event listener. Time update. And really, all I want to do is just set the stock current time target in your HTML to basically this formatting the time with the duration. And let's see if that works. Oh, it looks like the, the formatting isn't even working. So now I'm getting NAND, not a number. Maybe I should move this down on a new line. Weird. Window the audio. So yeah, this is kind of actually pretty weird. Whatever's happening to these elements. So for some reason it's saying like, not a number. Why would it say not a number? That's kind of weird. So we might want to check if we have the duration first. Like it's duration. And then we could do all of our stuff with the duration right here. And then on the time update, I want to actually console log time update event. And I want to also pass in this duration. But it looks like maybe just this code is wrong too. Yeah, like this format time function is not right. Let me just look it up. Convert JavaScript audio duration into minutes, second seconds. Yeah, like that. 
So here's some other person's example. I'm just going to rename it to format time so I don't have to change anywhere in the code. And let's run this again. Doesn't really look like it's working. Oh wait, why am I using the duration inside of the time update? Oh, that's that's so bad. I was supposed to use the current time property. That's silly. Here we go, so at least we're getting the proper time. Yeah, you know what, this is actually working. But the convert seconds function is not. Because I think we need to round the numbers. Oh, I guess that's what I get for just using some other person's answer for code on the internet. And even AI wasn't really able to give me a good answer. I just really want to get it in a simple setup just like this. I don't even think most of our songs will be more than this many. I don't know, is this a good solution right here? There's probably so many different solutions. Or right, maybe this one. This looks like they're using it. They're basically doing this. Okay. We just want to return in their, their. <laughs> Also, I don't want to use var because isn't that the outdated syntax for JavaScript? So I think this should be fine. What is this about though? The current time. This doesn't look right. Six. Okay. Wait, it's my six. Wait a sec. So let's do current time. So I think this is actually good. This looks good to me. Let's test it out. Huh. So the duration didn't show up for some reason. Oh, don't you have to wait? I think you have to set an event for once, like, the audio has loaded. Event for duration to load. I swear that's a thing. I know there's something for that. So you can get the duration of the audio, but you have to wait until it loads. There's like something weird like that. So yeah, what do we do if we can't get the duration? We're gonna have to think about that. It's happening pretty frequently, but it looks like at least our other the current time is working fine so we might just want to update ui so that we have two of the zeros just for now and then we can think of how we can like get rid of one of them if we don't like that ui for whatever reason see this looks good to me current time the only thing is the duration is just totally not working Hmm. Well, I have a good idea. How about inside of the time update function, we do the duration code? That's probably an okay idea. We can leave. Hmm, we might want to use that too, actually. So we'll just do it on a time update. All right. Oh, one thing that might happen though is if this audio player, when it disconnects, which it would disconnect because every time you put a new audio in, it's putting a new instance. But we would still leave the event listener of the old one, which means we'd have like multiple duplicated event listeners. So we want to not do that. And I think we can fix that by setting the event listener onto a property. We say like this time of event update listener. And then we should be able to remove so we'll add a disconnect function whenever the element gets removed from the page. And then we'll just do 
basically window.audio.remove event listener and pass in the event listener. So that should fix any issues there. So I just tried it and it said failed to execute remove event listener. Two arguments required but only one present. I want to look up that function and see what it's expecting. Expecting a type and a listener. Oh, so it's expecting basically the name and the function again. Wait, that's weird. Or no, it's the name first, I see. Put time update. And then we just pass in the listener that we saved. I think it's like that. So I switch, there we go. As you can see, the duration is getting set too. Although it's gonna be set, it, it's gonna set it every time. But I don't really think that's an issue. Then we can remove some of these logs. So we're not bloating up the console. And that's actually like a pretty good start for an audio player. The next thing we might want to do is add a play and pause button. So to do that, it's, it's pretty simple. We can just reuse the play partial that we already have for now, unless we want to have a different styling. And we can do our own thing. We can really just render the play and then pass it in the song. And because it will be the same song as the one that's playing, we can actually use both controls. Oh, the only thing is our play button is not showing like it's playing. So it has like the reverse. Oh, that's kind of tricky. Because look, now when we play, when we pause and play here, it doesn't update the one over here. So that is kind of a pain. So we might not want to reuse the partial because of that. We might just want to have our own yeah, I think we want our own play button that's uh, that's inside of the audio player controller. I think that's fine, but we'll still use like basically the same code, I guess. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll just copy that link for the play button. We can just render I don't even know what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> we also don't even need to put in a bar for right now. I just feel like it's gonna bloat up the page a little bit with all these icons. But this would be our nav player button. Right. And we do have a target too on here. We're probably going to want to change that to an audio player target. Audio dash player target. And then for the link, <clears throat> it could also be like the audio player toggle function. We just have to add these in. Inside of our audio player controller, we could add like toggle. We're just going to do something right there. I'm going to pass the event in. I'm going to do event default. And I'm also going to add those new targets, which is going to be the play and the pause target. We're going to have to think about how we're going to handle this. So inside of toggle, we would basically be listening for if. Yeah, we might want to toggle it. Tricky. I guess we'll have another function called like update. Uh, play button. <laughs> and we would just run this on connect. So like up here. Update play button. And we'd also run it inside of toggle. And then inside of update play button, we would check. So if window dot audio dot pause, then check if this dot 
play button. So if it's paused, we would want to hide the play button, or no, hide the pause button and show the play button. So if the play button class list contains hidden, then we're going to remove that hidden class from the play button. Oh, also, I need to make sure that I'm using play button, or not even play button, I have to use this dot play button, or this, this dot play target, because I called it play. Play target class list, remove hidden. Or wait, that's not right. I needed to do this check for the pause, so if pause target, if it doesn't contain hidden, then I'm going to hide it. Because I don't want to add more than one hidden class. That's kind of like the trick with this. So whenever you're going to add a class and you don't want to do like more than once, we're going to check first and see like if it doesn't contain it, then we're going to add it. So we make sure that we only do it one time. We can always remove the class because that's not really issue. In the else case, if it is plain, we want to have the opposite logic. So I'm just going to copy this and switch it around. So if the play target doesn't have a hidden class, we're going to make sure we add it. We're going to remove the class from the pause target. Now I'm going to see what that looks like. It actually is showing, like now it's showing, you know, the playing state. When we click. That's weird. It actually just doesn't do anything. So that's another thing where you have to actually toggle it inside of toggle. You have to say window.audio.pause window.audio.play else window.audio.pause So that should work. We click here. Oh, and now it actually toggles the icons and it pauses the song. So it is working. The only thing is the play button over here on the original element is not updating. So that's pretty tricky. But we should be able to fix that because in our music controller, we actually dispatched this event, which will tell all the items if they should update or not. So all we have to do is add that event over to the toggle method on the audio player controller. It's right here. Now for the audio source, we'd be passing in, instead of the URL value, it would be the window.audio.source. So we're gonna pass it directly from the audio element. I think that should work. So if we pause it here, oh, it should pause here. It should pause on the element, but for some reason it's not. Interesting. Also, the other way around, if we pause it over here, it's like it's not updating in both places, so that's kind of the trick. Mm -hmm. I have to think about this how we can get this button to also update the one over here. <clears throat> it's tricky, because you'd think on the toggle, we'd be dispatching this event, and then over here on the music controller, we would be running this function right here. We have a console log, like, audio change event. Oh yeah, look, so when I click the one on the player, we are getting all these events. Now if we just look inside of this function, so if it was like, is a matching play button, I'm wondering if we just don't have the correct logic for the other condition, which I think is the case. Yeah, it looks like we're getting a bunch of logs for the matching play button. Or actually, that's not if it's matching. This is if it's different. So we need to do another condition 
like else if it is matching. And then we would do the opposite logic. So because yeah, this audio changed event is only really expecting to handle like when you switch an audio over. We're talking about if the audio has like played or is it is it playing or stopping. So it is kind of more tricky. Hmm. I don't know if I want to have all the code inside of here, but we can try. We basically just need like to get this function. Where is it? Where we toggle. We could try just toggling. That might actually be the best idea. Even over in the audio player controller, like I did all these conditions, but I could have just toggled it too. Right, that's actually like a safer way to model. We can have less code. Which actually in both case <laughs> look in both cases. Would that even work? Oh this is funny, it's like it is kind of backwards, but it's at least updating over here we can see that it's happening. That's funny. It's going like the opposite way around because it's just toggling it. Also, playing it just right here, the icon doesn't update. So I, I bet that it's having like some weird thing where it's just looping back and forth between these two. Or actually, it might just be the toggle code. Switching it to toggle might actually not be what we want. Whoops. The music controller. Let's try to... Let's not do it else. Let's just bring it back to the old code. So this still works. The only thing is talking between these two. It's not really working. So I almost want to do like a different event on the audio player. Instead of hijacking audio player switched, we could do an event for, yeah, cause we're not even trying to hook into the audio player switch. We're trying to hook into like, is it stopping or playing? And we're going to need to do that somewhere. Somewhere in one of these stimulus controllers, we need to have that event. All right guys, I was thinking about it a little bit more. And what I realized is we need another event, almost like the audio player switched event. And we would run it inside of toggle. Cause basically all that we have to think about in our app is we have those play buttons, which is what you initially use to turn on a song. And once you have it playing, you also have the now player one, right? Which is going to, all we want to do is talk from the now player or I keep calling it the now player because that's what I call it in my own app. But for here, we usually, it's just like the audio player. But what we need to do is communicate between the audio player and the play button on the card. So I'm going to create a new event. Instead of audio player switched, I'm going to call it like audio player. Let's use a colon. We'll just say toggled. And what we can do is we can pass in a detail. We can still pass in the audio source, which will get it from the window audio.source. And that'll be useful because we can compare to make sure that like if it's if it's the right audio. Because you wouldn't want a card for another audio to be toggling as well. Since it's gonna get that event, we need some way to specify it. So that source is actually an okay way to do that. So let's go back over to the play partial. So inside of here is where we're setting that data controller, music controller. So on this, we need another another event inside of the action. 
So we're gonna do that audio player colon toggles, and we're gonna do that on the window. That's gonna go to the music controller, and we can just have a new function audio toggles. Yeah, I think that looks good to me. And then on the music controller, you'll see this is the audio changed function all the way down here. We have another one for audio toggles which is where we can update the UI. So of course we want to make sure first that it's the correct URL. So actually we're going to do the opposite of this. Instead of not equal, it's going to be checking is it equal first. And then inside of here we can do our code, which I guess I want to check if window audio paused. We'll do like that whole check. So if it is paused, then we basically want to do this code or if the play target contains hidden, we're going to remove hidden, or wait, if it's paused, then we want to show the play button. So if it contains, if the play target contains hidden, we're going to remove hidden. But we don't need to check for that. We can always remove hidden because that's not a problem. We want to check is if the pause target Pause if not pause target contains, then we're gonna add it. So that's the only thing we need to check for just in case. So we don't like for whatever reason, if this was already paused. I guess this my logic doesn't even make sense because the audio toggled would happen if we pause it or play it. So if it is pausing it, for whatever reason, if this was already on paused, it wouldn't I guess add the class. I don't know. Anyway, let's do the else where it'll be the opposite logic. So the pause target will always we'll just remove the hidden class and then we'll check about the play target. If it doesn't contain hidden, then we're gonna add it. Let's see if this works, man. I don't even know. So I just did it right there. I just paused. It looks like we're getting a bunch of errors. Is the E is not defined. So I guess I didn't pass E in through the function. Let me fix that. Let's try that again. There, it's actually working. So my logic was correct. Now for the other way around, this is kind of a pain, but we have to do it the other way around. If we click play, if we click pause here, it doesn't update on the freaking on the audio player. So we need to fix that. So if we go back to the music controller, we would essentially inside of toggle. So this right here is when we're initializing. We might want to move this dispatch event into the initialize. Or we could even move it into update audio player. So this is gonna, I guess this is just to update the other play buttons to hide them or to like change the state. So we can do that inside of here, which is when ever we initialize. The outside of here is just for the toggling. That's literally all this is. So we're changing the state and then we're doing the simple check right here. We're gonna either pause or play it. So what I wanna do is just create another event that we can send over to the audio player so that it'll know to change the play button UI. So, I'm gonna dispatch another event. It'll be like music. The music toggled event. I know we're getting we're getting so many events here, but this is just how we're going to communicate between the controllers. So then on the audio player controller, we would listen for this event. So to, we're going to go to that audio player partial. I'm just going to add a data action right here on the controller. It'd be music toggled at window. It's going to go to audio player music toggled function. 
So then on the audio player controller, you could have another function in here. It would be music toggle. And I think, actually, all we need to do is update play button. So we don't even need a new function for music toggles. Let's go back to our audio player and let's just say update play button. Just like that. I think this will work. So look, like, this button is now pausing the button there. And if we do it the other way around, it's also working. Okay, this is awesome. There we go, guys. That was kind of a pain. That was like a hurdle. I hadn't done that in a while, so it's kind of tricky, but once you get the logic working, this is just such a sick experience. So I think the next thing, actually a pretty important thing, is changing where you're at in the song. So when you click on here, nothing's happening. So that'll be like the last thing where we can update the time of the song. So to do that, let's go back into our audio player partial. And then on this range, I'm gonna add a data action. We're gonna do a click. Grab, let's do the change event. So change is gonna to go to audio player time updated. Or how about like current time updated. So we'll make a method like this on the audio player controller. Current time updated, and then inside of here. We would just take the range target value and we'd set window.audio.current time to it. Just like that. And that should do it. Let's test it out. The song. Yep. Look at that. It works perfectly. Let's see. Yo, I'm actually really happy right now. It was such a pain to like get through some of those bugs in the code. But now that we're here, we have a fully working audio player. We can go, we can listen to our music. It just feels dope. Now I can't tell is the I can't tell if actually like if this is moving. I really can't tell. I don't think it's working like for the visualization of where you were at in the song i think i don't know if i added that yet let's go back to the audio player controller are we doing anything we're trying to right here on the time update listener oh we're setting the max but we're not setting the value like we did up here so we need to fix that by setting this dot range target value to the window audio current time. It's like that current time. We're missing out that one piece of logic. But now, it brings the whole thing together. So you have your time updating over here, and then you also have the range updating. You can still click to move it, although it looks like there's a little bit of a glitch with moving it. You have to like really click. I wonder if it's just because we're moving it. Yeah, definitely because we're moving it programmatically. There could be like some sort of glitch in the timing. So we might want to think about how we could counteract that. But it actually works pretty well. Yeah, that's interesting because this would keep updating the value so like if there was some glitch in a millisecond it's like programmatically moving it it can be kind of tricky anyways this is awesome i'm really happy with this this is probably it for this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it you learned something new following along on my journey to build spotify in the next episode i'll probably add in the payments we can actually pay these artists based off the listens, like however many times their song is being listened to, we can figure out that whole algorithm and just start paying out artists right away. Hope you guys enjoyed.